Well, I am so honored to be here, Kathy. Kathy Shimatero, who's pastor and author, and I'm sure many other titles that I'm missing right now. I've been blessed by reading your book. Thank you for coming spending time with me today. Well, thanks so much for having me, Laurie. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I know there's so such a lot. We could be together for hours, we I'm could. sure. Yeah. But I in a so. short version, tell me more about the story that you start unpacking your book, The Cross, about your upbringing and what brought you to Jesus. Well, first of all, I was raised in a very dysfunctional home, which at the time I thought we were the only ones. Now I realize everybody has dysfunctional are. homes. <laughs> but seriously, back then we were the only uh, kids from a broken home mm. in our school, in our community. So that was very difficult. And so we were in a Catholic community and, and um, my mother ended up being married and divorced four more times, like four times altogether. Oh, wow. yeah. My father was an abusive alcoholic. And so I grew up feeling a lot of shame, feeling very inferior, feeling rejection, even, you know, from people at school, the church, you know, all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. I got very rebellious in my teen years as a result of that, which, uh, you know, you, you're just trying to find acceptance sure. and, and find something that, you know, where you feel like you're okay. Mm -hmm. And so I went through a rebellious teen years, got into the drug scene. Then when I was 18 years old, I was led to the Lord by a group, a small Bible study through Navigators, and mm -hmm. they invited me, and I went to the group and gave my heart to Jesus, and I haven't looked back. And so my life Praise just God. dramatically changed from that point on. Wow. I mean, this is a story that yeah. has impacted, obviously, many people, but it impacted why you are now writing. I know I've got, there's three books. There's one yeah. I'm missing here. You've got to give me your third book. But these books and your, all your focus in your writing is on the cross. Well, the reason for that is after I got saved and then I ended up in ministry, ended up a pastor's wife and in leadership, and throughout the course of the years, because of hurts and, you know, even my past fears and insecurities, which God delivered me from, yeah. but then getting into leadership, mm. they get an, ignited again. It's funny because how that of, can <laughs> yeah, I know, that, right? Like all of a sudden you're being judged and criticized yeah. for everything. People have expectations that you can't meet and right. all this stuff happens. So the enemy just gets in there. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself putting walls around my heart. I, I had fears, fears of disappointing people, yeah. fears that I wasn't going to measure up and all of that started yeah. to rise up. And so, and then I was married and my husband was killed in a car accident. So that was wow. another whole story. But uh, then I remarried. And you had three kids. I had three time. daughters. Three yes. daughters. Yeah. And, wow. And, and now you're widowed. Yeah, and then I married my husband now, Pastor Rick Shimatero, and uh, he had three sons. So we had the Brady Bunch, blended oh, a family awesome. together, yeah. and uh, back into being a pastor's wife. And so it was wow. just a, a long, a crazy journey. Okay, just pause. I mean, we're talking, <laughs> you're parenting six kids, you've yeah. been through a lot of trauma, yeah. you're put in a leadership role. I mean, you know, there's a recipe for disaster on a good day, right? Yeah. But isn't God good? And he's so gracious to us, and he helps us work through our wounds, yes. right? Tell me a little bit about, I know in this first book you wrote, The Cross, it, it really is about the cross healing us. It is, because right? what happened to me, my heart had kind of hardened, not against God so much, though obviously if it does against people or yeah. your fear of people, then you're gonna have a hard heart against God. But I still love God, I was still serving him, but I felt this, I don't know, almost like I was doing it out of duty. Right. And then when I uh, saw the movie, The Passion of the Christ, wow. I just had an incredible experience with the cross where God supernaturally healed me through all of the hurts and the disappointments and the fears and everything. And so then mm. that caused me to really study the cross. Mm. And I started buying every book on it, just researching. And that first book resulted in that, but it dramatically right. changed my life because I, I believe a lot of Christians believe the cross is where you go to to get saved, mm -hmm. which it is. Yes. However, they um, don't realize that it's also what God gave us to reveal his heart, to reveal his love, to reveal how we're to live the life, yeah. to reveal how to get peace and joy and victory and healing. We can find it all when we really understand and get full yeah. revelation of the cross. Not that you'll ever have all the revelation, but you yeah. get the more revelation you have, the greater the victory, the greater mm. the peace, the greater the joy you'll have. And so the cross forever speaks to us. Mm -hmm. It forever has thousands of messages that yeah. it helps us live this life in victory. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of one of the messages that the cross speaks to us that for many it's not, so it's not just a historical event, but now it's a healing of our heart. What do, what's one of the messages that 
that the cross speaks well, to Well, probably a big one is, and it, this applies to everything in our lives, the message of the cross is all about suffering, dying, to get life. Mm. And Jesus taught us, you know, if you want to save your life, you got to lose it, right? If you want to live, you got to die. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we um, have to understand that everything in life has to go through that process in order to get life. Wow. Taking marriage as an example. We all know in marriage, you know, there is a bit of suffering, yeah. but there's also a dying that has to happen. Sure. Yeah. And unfortunately, many times in our, what we see around us is marriages break up because rather than dying to self, mm. they try to kill each other. <laughs> and But if you die to self, you'll have resurrection life. You'll have mm. victory. You'll have joy. You'll have peace in your marriage. So but that applies to every area mm -hmm. of our life, whether it's finances, whether it's our health, Right. There's always got to be sacrifice. There's always got to be laying down. There's always got to be a dying mm -hmm. in order to have life. And that's what the cross did. That's mm -hmm. the message of it. Yeah. That's how to live the kingdom life. Yeah. And the cross is personal, isn't it? Very personal. I mean, yeah. God loved, so loved the world that he mm -hmm. sent his mm -hmm. son mm -hmm. for you, yes. right? For me. Yes. This is a personal God mm -hmm. that comes to us. You know, I'm using this uh, now I know it's your third book. Mm -hmm. I got to get your second book. But the 101 reasons to live a cross-centered life, I'm using this as my devotional right now, Kathy. Awesome. I'm yeah, loving yeah, it. Yeah, and and as you said, the cross gives us so many reasons. When we align our lives with the cross, mm -hmm. and some of my favorites, can I share some of my sure, favorites? Absolutely. All right. Um, as I'm going through this devotional book, and you give so many examples of what that looks like, because mm -hmm. you make it really tangible. Uh, to give like him, to overcome selfishness, mm -hmm. right? That's one of the lessons the cross teaches us. To take refuge, to have peace, um, to find forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Isn't mm -hmm. that the power of the cross, right? To follow him, to die, to live, just like you illustrated, right? To never give up. Right. You have 101 reasons. practical reasons. What one stand out to you? Well, actually, the first one oh, is, yeah? is the, the knowing the character know of God, God's character, because yeah. that's the foundation of everything. If we mm. do not know God and know his character, yeah. then we won't trust him. So and Because life throws all kinds of things at us. Yeah. And so when we know God's character, we know the bigger picture is going to work out for good. Mm. And we can know that whatever we're going through, mm. that God has something in it. He's going to show us. We just need to keep our hearts right and yeah. guard our hearts and trust him. Yeah. And it's hard to trust God. We, we yeah. tend to trust ourselves more than yeah. God or God we try to trust other things it's more than so God. It's so true, right? And, um, but yeah. the Bible says that Jesus revealed the exact character of God. Yeah. And so what he did on the cross revealed the heart of God, yeah. revealed how much God loves us, how yeah. far he went to win us, how yeah. much he cares, how much we can trust him. Yeah. And so that's to me, that's so the foundation good. of everything. Well, I just, I love the journey I'm going on in going through your devotional book, and I encourage others to do it. They're short. I like they're like one. There's one yeah. day right there, yeah. right? Yeah. But they're deep. Mm -hmm. They're deep and profound. And it's one thing to say trust God, but you don't trust someone you don't know. No, you can't. And for me, this is another deep dive into knowing who God is. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. would you say to someone watching today who are facing, you know, troubles of many kind? Maybe it's an abusive home mm -hmm. situation. Maybe it's marriage trouble. What would you say to them that the cross? Would, would speak to them today? Well, I find in my own personal life, if I'm going through a trial or a difficult time, or maybe even I don't get the answered prayer I thought I would, mm -hmm. or I see something happening, it's not fair, this isn't right, why is this happening? And I, when I keep my focus on the cross, it wasn't fair, it wasn't right what happened mm -hmm. to Jesus. And, but he trusted his heavenly father. And because he was willing to go through the process of whatever he had to go through, mm -hmm. he rose from the dead. What you're going through, what you're seeing, isn't the final story. Oh, that's the so final good. story is resurrection. Yes, and that's what we're going to get every time when we trust Him. That is so true, and so often it's a journey of trust, mm -hmm. isn't it? Would you just pray right now, Kathy, for someone watching? I know they're watching right now, and they're saying, "I need to understand more fully the cross." Would you just pray that over our nation and for even the individuals oh, watching? Absolutely. <laughs> Father, I just thank you, Lord God, that you left us with such an incredible, incredible work of the cross, Lord, that it, it forever speaks. It's always speaking of your love. It's always speaking of how we're to live. It's always speaking that there's a better day, that there's victory, that there's life on the other side. And that message never changes. And so I pray for anyone out there that's struggling. Maybe their marriage is falling apart. They're being abused. Maybe they've just lost a child or, or maybe they're just going through a difficult time financially or maybe in their physical bodies. And 
Lord, I just pray that they will look to you yes. and know that you have the answer, that there's life and hope in you mm -hmm. and that you can bring about healing. You can bring about deliverance. Yes. You can bring about peace and love even in the midst of the storm. Yes. And so, Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit will just minister and speak to mm -hmm. anybody listening to this program at this time, Lord, that they would know that they need to live a cross-centered life. Yes. And in doing that, Every day will be changed and transformed mm -hmm. and aligned with you in your plan and purpose for their life so that they can walk out the joy of their salvation. Yes. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Kathy, so much. Where can they get your book? You can go to uh, windsorlifecenter.com right. and uh, you can buy it there. If you buy it there, the proceeds go to a woman's home. Wonderful, but, uh, which we're going to talk about. Yes, in we our, are. We're yeah. going to spend more time together. Yeah. Kathy, thank you so much. Well, now Officer Rose finds hope and a future after years of struggling with the guilt of shooting an unarmed man. Watch.